as have queued up in previous months. Um, I, I hope that that's helpful for you so that if you if you have questions, you can you can always queue them up for me. We write those all down and then I sort of grab the ones that uh, are either thematically appropriate or just are the most interesting to me at the moment. And um, because I have so little brain space at uh, in this present 2020, um, I'm, I've just not been doing thematically appropriate ones. I've just been grabbing ones that, that, that look interesting to me and that, and that I hope are helpful to you. I know that some of you are writers and some of you are fans and some of you are fans who just uh, want to see, you know, how, do, how does a writer do their thing? What, what, what does that world look like? And so I thought that, uh, so I like to give you a, a little peek behind the curtain. Um, oh, first thing, first, uh, I, I, I guess I should try to pay the bills. Uh, we, we do have the, uh, the Brent Weeks web store uh, is open. I just open that up every month. I just open that briefly um, so that uh, if you want to buy uh, hardcovers of Black Prism or if you want to buy some t-shirts, uh, we have that and then you'll get them in time for Christmas. Uh, that's just open through the end of November. Um, I, uh, oh, and I, I had a cool thing this month that I wanted to show off. I, I had uh, some of my, some of my, my, my German books have arrived in the mail for me. Uh, this is the, uh, the pen ultimate volume. It is, it is, uh, chunky. Uh, and I think the, uh, the final volume is coming out in Germany very soon. Um, and then the, uh, the beautiful cover here for, uh, the, the French, uh, novel, um, which, which is again, uh, translated by, uh, Olivier de Bernard, who, who I've met and, and who I like very much, uh, does an excellent job with these and love these covers. And, and the cover for the final uh, volume is absolutely stunning. I don't have one of those yet, so I'll show you that to you when I can. Uh, these covers are super cool too. These are from, uh, I think this is the Hong Kong version. I cannot, I cannot read this, so I, I can't tell you. And unfortunately, it's a little, oh man, could I have more glare in here? No, I can, but there's that. Um, oh, all three have the have the same cover. Sorry, I'll get this out of the way. Yeah, they, yeah, they have to break these into like into three. You know, this is Broken Eye, I think, and it's got three volumes. But this uh, this guy always does a fantastic job with the cover. So I just want to show those off um, because you know excitement comes in small packages sometimes when you are a uh, when you're a writer. Um, t t today, uh, f first question I wanted to to pick up from from last time um, <clears throat> is. Uh, Oh, oh man, sorry, I got, I got, I got distracted by, by some of your questions in the sidebar. Great questions, but I'm going to ignore them. Um, uh, uh, Robert Bradford asked, uh, how important is it to make characters and secondary characters unique? Uh, how do you balance the similarities that make them friends and keep them unique? Um, so, for, so first of all, you don't have to make your, your, your characters be friends at all. Uh, that's they uh, they have to have a reason if, if 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 say you've got a buddy drama or something or or, or a buddy comedy or, or whatever um, or even a quest uh, they have to have a reason to be together they do not have to be friends uh, they might end up being friends it's it's actually kind of more interesting if they're not if they're or if they're not initially if 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 they have differences that cause conflict are are fantastic like the differences between them that give your um, they, they, they give your plot breadth and then tension um, are really interesting. And, and you'll see authors do that all the time because it's a really useful vehicle. It, it's like, oh, here's the person who's really straight laced and they care about this and this. And then here's the freewheeling road. Well, that's that's more fun when you have that together because then uh, the straight laced character can, um, can kind of present one side of an argument. Hey, we should do this thing. And then the rogue character can be like, no, nah, we should totally do it this way. And then you can go with either one of those characters on any particular adventure and things go wrong because you did it their way. Uh, and, and then, you know, hopefully at the end, you have some sort of synthesis where you need the rogue being good with his roguish stuff and you need the straight lace character doing her straight lace thing and, and, and learning from each other. And that's how they, uh, you, you know, uh, learn the final lesson and, and face the final bad guy. So, um, so, so, so yes, it, I, I think it is really important to have your secondary characters, uh, your tertiary characters. Um, I don't know what the word is for your fourth eerie characters. Um, but, uh, to, to, to have those be interesting, uh, to, to have those be, oh, th thank you, Colin. Um, <clears throat> to, to have those be, uh, quaternary, quaternary, uh, characters, um, be different from each other because it, like like this is especially a, a problem with with fantasy 
and especially with epic fantasy, when you have m larger and larger casts of characters, then they can just like blur into one kind of person, um, and and that's a that's a that's a real hazard. So you want to you want to keep those you want to keep people fresh and interesting and different, and that also gives you. Uh, Chances to have a really uh, a diverse cast and and uh, you know ethnically diverse, diverse in beliefs, diverse in outlook, and, and it lets you stretch as a writer and, and make characters who feel alive on the page. Um, so so I, I I say stuff your uh, stuff your cast with characters who are different from each other. It's going to be more interesting and it's going to be a lot more difficult for you. Uh, so so enjoy that as if as if everything else was so easy. Um, Chris, whose name I do not have, uh, I don't have your, have your last name, asked, uh, how does a magic system affect the building of your worlds? Um, and it's, it's, uh, it's profoundly, is, is kind of the answer. Or at least you have to, you have to consider that if you're, if you have a lot of magic in your world, it has to, um, <clears throat> oh, you guys are getting buzzy audio. Oh, that stinks. Um, uh, let me, let me mess with this. Um, tell me if the audio is a little bit better now. I swear, we, 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 we did our tech check-in and everything seemed cool. No, it's not better. It's worse. Um, oh, you guys, this kills me. Okay. Um, it's, it, it, is it so bad that, that I should actually uh, disconnect and, and come back in? Um, or, or should we just fight through it? Um, just if I drop out and come back in, you know, you never know if that's actually going to work. It's going to bring Listen, me back Laura here. Um, I think if you do drop out, uh, I can invite you back in. Um, so that won't end the stream. Okay, I will. Uh, I will attempt that, guys. So, so it'll probably be. It, it, it might be. It might be like two minutes. So I apologize. I will. I will. Uh, I will be back. In the meantime, how are all of you guys doing? I'm Laura. I'm the marketing manager of Orbit. Um, do you have any questions while we wait for Brent to return? I really don't know what happened. We did our tech check and it was perfect. Um, have you guys read anything good lately? Any Orbit books, maybe? All right, I am attempting to be back. Can you guys hear me? And is the audio better? Okay, fantastic. Okay, thank you. Uh, sorry for that. I swear we really do uh, do technical checks. Um, should, should, should I tell you? Should I tell you what happened right there? So I, I had the whole thing all set up and. And had a very pleasant uh, chat with. Um, uh, well, I'll just I'll, I'll just let her remain nameless. I know sometimes she she doesn't like to be in the spotlight. We're having a very pleasant chat. My dad calls me on the phone, and Apple, in its infinite wisdom, has it you know instantly transfer me to the call, and um, and 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 I I I hang up on my dad because you know it was it was one fifty nine and I was supposed to be talking to you guys. Uh, and I disconnect all the Bluetooth and stuff. And like all of a sudden, I cannot get my headphones to reconnect with the stream. 
And then I ask her, is everything great? And she's like, yeah, yeah, everything's great. I can totally hear you. And so I go, okay, let's just, let's just do this thing. I don't want to be late. So I, I hopped in and that's how that happened. I, I said it was a story. I didn't say it was an interesting one. So anyway, that's, that's that. Thank you for your patience and, and me burning up half of our time together. Um, <clears throat> No, no, I, 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 I totally believe you, Orbit Live host. See, I didn't out you, but March did. Okay. Uh, uh, how much does a magic system affect the building of your worlds? Well, it, it, it really depends. So I, I think there's a thing that a lot of fantasy writers uh, kind of like to ignore because um, – but what I like to do is I, I, I like to really dig deeper and, and think, like, how is this really going to affect people? And I, I, I think if you had magic users um, in your world, uh, most people would just be terrified. Um, the, the, there's, there's this C.S. Lewis quote that, that, that says, he, he, he sort of makes this argument that, that the reason we don't burn witches today uh, is isn't because we're morally superior to people in, in the 1600s, uh, but it's because we don't believe that there are people who can murder you, who have literally sold their souls to the devil, who can cause you know women to have stillborn children, who can make the weather bad, who can cause your crops to fail, who can cause madness. Like those people would be terrifying. Um, and, and, and so when you're building a, a fantasy world, like if you have people who, who can do that kind of stuff, like it's kind of rational to have an irrational reaction to somebody who just like, oh, you moved the boundary line on my fence. I am going to murder your whole family and there will be no trace left and no one will be able to pin it on me. I'll just get away with it. Like those people would be scary. Um, you would ask yourself, why do those people think they're better than me? How did, what did they do to get those powers? Um, so, so when you're building your magic system in, in a world, you, you have to ask yourself a, a lot of questions. Um, you, you know, how, how, are, how are these magics uh, distributed? Are, are just people randomly born with them? Um, is, is all of people group X or Y, do all of them have it? Um, do people learn it, but only X and Y people can learn it? If so, you're going to be terrified. You know, if only Canadians had magic, you'd be terrified of Canadians, especially if you lived you know, in, in Northwestern Montana and you, you've seen how those people drive. Um, <clears throat> sorry, I'm sure Albertans are lovely. Just tourists nowhere are lovely. Um, so, so, um, uh, so you have to ask yourself like, like who has this power? How do people who are in power already, uh, you, you know, your rulers, your, your authorities, how do they feel about the magic? Do they want to control it? Because usually if there's some resource, people in power are going to want to control it. Um, and, and, and how do people on the ground deal with it when one of their neighbors, uh, shows up and has, and has this, um, and has this power. So if, if, if you have what they, what they call a high magic system, which is like, there's a lot of magic in your world, you have to do a ton more thinking about how does this play out? How, how do people feel about this? Are people excited about having somebody who can help them in their village or are they scared or are they both, or does it, are, are there different beliefs in different places about things? Um, and if, if you have a very low magic system, which would be, you know, there's very little magic, uh, you don't have to change things like, you know, how does refrigeration work in your world? Or why don't people just use use magic refrigerators? Um, uh, because the presence of a lot of magic would change, you know, everything in your society. Um, so in a low magic world, you don't have to do quite that much stuff, but maybe they aren't as controlled. And then you do have the things like, oh, people randomly getting burned. And maybe sometimes they're getting burned because they are, you know, wizards or, or, or whatever, and they are murdering people. And maybe sometimes it's just people who are mentally ill. Um, so, 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 like, I like to think those questions through. I, I think a lot of fantasy authors just think like, okay, yeah, that's, that's fine and everything, but that's not really the story I, I want to tell. So I'm not going to really delve into that. I'm just going to pretend that there are wizards and witches and everybody's kind of cool with it. Or, you know, in the Harry Potter world, it's, it's like, um, uh, which I've been reading to my, my daughter. So it kind of comes to mind a lot in, in recent talks. Um, it, it's like, I'm just going to pretend that muggles don't really know anything about what's been going on, even though there's always been witches and wizards. And yeah, it's a stretch to believe, but don't think about it too much because that's not really the story I'm going to tell. I'm not telling about muggles and, and, and the whole normal world's history and how wizards have been, you, you know, working through all that. I'm really telling a story about these kids at a school and, and, and that's my story. So let's just ignore that other stuff. So, so deciding that you want to ignore that other stuff is totally fine. If, if that's the kind of story you're telling and just kind of make it, 
you, you know, you, you can, you can uh, uh, basically, if, if you do enough other, other things well, people will be like, okay, that could never really work. And you'll have think pieces, you know, that'll show up 10 years later or a year later if, you, if you're really successful. Uh, but most people will just be like, okay, that's, that's not what this story is about. It's, you know, yeah, time turners don't work, but the, like, just don't worry about that. That's, that's not what we're talking about here. Um, okay. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, I, 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 I'm, I'm going to hit another a couple questions that are very quick, and then I'll hit your hit your live questions. Uh, I feel like I'm always trying to catch up. It, it feels sort of like a deadline here uh, with the questions that are that you guys put put it, uh, in live with and the questions that I have from previous times. Uh, who is your favorite character from a fantasy book that is not yours, and why? Asks Eb. I think uh, I, I had to think about this one for a while actually, and 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 I came up with the. With the answer, I think. I think. I think my favorite. Um, I think my favorite fantasy character is is Sam Gamgee. Um, like, like people don't think of, of Tolkien as a, an inverter of tropes, um, but I, I I I think they underestimate him there. Uh, really, the 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 hero in many ways of of um, in in the Lord of the Rings is Sam, and and he's 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 got no magic powers. He's he's stubborn and good. And and here's this simple guy uh, who ends up doing what uh, you know all the powerful elves and the wizards and, and everybody else couldn't do, and and I think that's just magnificent. And you you don't see this thing of like oh secretly Sam has a dark side, which somebody today would totally do. Oh secretly Sam is this. And it's like no Sam's just a good guy, and and, and that's that's amazing. I love it. Um, you, you, you also have. Um, uh, Tol Tolkien, you know, his, he doesn't have a quest. He has an anti quest, you know, people aren't going to get something They're They're, they're going on this big quest to, to throw something away, which is, which is kind of an inversion to, to me. Um, and then of course he has, you know, um, Deus Ex Machina are, are, are very, um, very frowned upon, you know, and, and, and probably have not been enjoyed since the ancient Greeks stopped writing, um, their, their, their tragedies and, and, and comedies. And, and, you know, he said, you know, we've, we've got, uh, that's not a Deus Ex Machina. It's a it's a U catastrophe, and 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 defended that, and and you know obviously used one uh, there at the end. Uh, so 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 I, I I love Sam. I think he's a fantastic character, um, and 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 I, and I love that he's he's just good. Uh, so so Sam, Sam is maybe my favorite character. Um, I, I mean obviously I have others, but <clears throat> um, and now I'm going to let's see. No, I'm gonna skip that one. Uh, I'll, I'll make it that some other time because I've been going for, well, 19 minutes now. I'll be at some of it with technical difficulties. Okay. Here's, here's, here's a question. I can look for your questions. Uh, as, as usual, um, sorry, if you guys are on Facebook, uh, you don't get an upvote and I don't see you quite as easily. Um, but if uh, I, I, I try to tackle, uh, the upvoted, uh, questions here on Crowdcast and here's, here's one now. Um, Oh, that, so, so, so this one's a little bit spoilery. Uh, question about the, the Black Sea Crystals uh, and, and if there can be multiple. And yes, there can be multiple. So, so there has to, has to be the right conditions to, uh, to, I think that's not too spoilery. I can I, I get away with saying that now. Um, yeah, 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 you know, that, 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 that uh, um, oh, and, and, and uh, or Holm, you have a question about him. Um, and, and, yeah, you know, there's there's clearly a whole sequel in that. Um, no, no, there's not. Uh, that, 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 that was just outside the scope of this story. And um, uh, it's it's it, I I guess my uh, part of my philosophy of of ending a series is or or like of of any book writing any book is like there's always going to be reader questions um, and. And it gets really clunky if if you try to answer every single one of those. Like like you're just shoehorning it in, or 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 you have to have a, a a big thing at the very end. And 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 this is what happened to this guy, and then this is what happened to this guy, and this is what happened to this minor character. Especially if you have a, a huge cast of characters, and especially if you have a lot of subplots. Um, it's it, it's like like I want to answer the big questions that I raised, and um, and. 
and, and, and many of the smaller important questions, but, but you can't answer every single, you, you know, where, well, where is this person? What happens to them five years down the line? It's like, that's, that's beyond the scope of this story and it doesn't matter to this story and it doesn't matter to these characters, you know, at, at this moment in time. I'm not gonna go into that. I'm not gonna tell you how things turned out for them uh, down the line. Um, so, so, you know, at, at some points that, that, uh, that brings, uh, a, a, another series of questions to, to mind, which I, I wish, I wish we could have a talk about spoilers. Um, like, like I, or I, I wish that a, um, that the various fantasy fandoms, cause there's not just one, there's a lot of fantasy fandoms, um, could, could figure out what is a reasonable time period when you can say, you know, book's been out 15 years. We can talk about the ending of that book without somebody being like, oh, oh no, no, you spoiled the book for me. I can't, you know, I can never read it now. Um, which, which is just silliness. Like, like, and, and, and there's a few things which, you know, conflate things. It's like, okay, with, with uh, Game of Thrones, you're like, okay, there's a lot of people who are never going to read books or just going to watch a TV show because they're just not readers. I get it. So, so like, okay, keep your spoilers to yourself about what happens at dinners and, and who dies and who lives, et cetera, et cetera. Like, like I, I get that. But like when a book comes out, it, it seems there ought to be some reasonable amount of time, like maybe, you know, a, a year after the paperback comes out, it can be like, okay, if, you, if you're a big fan, you've had some time and now people can talk about it and, and, and be, without people howling about, about spoilers. I, I, I read this, um, I read this study somebody did once. Um, they, they, they did it at some um, University of Santa Barbara or uh, some California university. Can't remember which one now. Uh, San Diego, maybe <clears throat> San Diego State. Anyway, they, they did a uh, they did this study on on spoilers and do spoilers spoil things for readers? Uh, do do they make you not enjoy the text? And so they, you know, obviously they had a control group. People had just read a thing blind. And, and then they had an, um, a group where they told them what happens at the end of the story. Um, and, and naturally, because it was, you know, a small study, they, they weren't looking at epic fantasy series. They, they were looking at, you know, short stories. And, and, and they told people, you know, the people who were in the spoiled uh, group actually enjoyed the stories more. Um, they knew where they were going and, and they, uh, they could see how they were getting there and they really enjoyed that. E even things with surprise endings. Um, and and so which, which sort of explains why a lot of times when you reread a book, you will actually enjoy it more the second time because you know where you're going. You're not sitting there asking, you know, how, how are we gonna get there? What's gonna happen? What, what are we gonna do? You're not caught up in the process of, of, of where, but you're more caught up in the process of, or you're, you're more enjoying the how. So, so people have this huge belief um, that spoilers actually wreck stories for other people. That, that is, it, it's, as far as I can tell, is, is not supported. Granted, a lot of studies are garbage, um, and so maybe this one was too, or maybe it doesn't, uh, maybe it doesn't apply to, to epic fantasy or, or long form stories. Um, but, but I, yeah, I, 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 I just wish we could come to a place where it'd be like, okay, it's time for us to talk about the ending of that and, and engage with that, how, how we feel about it without people, you know, sometimes a minority shrieking about how terrible you are for talking about something publicly. Um, which, which ties into a slightly, if I can just go, you know, even farther, um, <clears throat> Uh, uh, slightly related and, and but not totally related theme of, of authors talking about what their own work means, which I, I think authors should be really, really careful about uh, because generally I think you wrote what's in the book. Uh, once you publish it, it belongs to the readers. And so if you're telling people uh, years later, oh yeah, yeah, this is what was really going on under the surface. It's like, ah, if you wanted that to, to be seen, you should have written it in a way that, that a good reader could see it. And, and sure, there's stuff, there's stuff in in my books that, that readers haven't picked up yet, or at least that I haven't seen of, of readers picking up yet. And it's like, oh, it'd be nice if somebody noticed that at some point. Um, but I, but, but I, 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 think it's, I think it's vanity for, for me to be like, oh, hey, look at this smart thing I did. I, I, or look at this, you know. Um, oh, oh, let's, let's put a little on that. Uh, you know, look, look at this good thing I did, please. Please praise me for this, um, and so so, so I, I don't like that. So that maybe authors get a, get a keep out of, out of that uh, out of that spoilery discussion years down the road, much though it vexes them. Um, 
and, and let readers have it. So uh, let me uh, let, let me hop in here. I've already taken up 26 of your precious minutes. Um, <clears throat> uh, okay, Colin, you're, you're cracking me up. Um, let's see. Oh, er, early bird. Here, here's one I've been itching to ask a few authors. Hold on, that one just. You, somebody upvoted something and it jumped around. Um, uh, Gina, oh Gina, you always have great questions. Um, you you, you got to knock it off, Gina, because because you're getting more of your questions answered than everybody else. But I already started answering yours, so so too late. Um, uh, it, it, here's what I've been itching to ask a few authors: If you are what you eat, then I only want to eat the good stuff. You know, this quote. Should this apply to reading as well? Does the answer differ as a reader than as a writer? Um, and as a writer. Um, Man, I, I, uh, <clears throat> I apply it. I, I mean, I, I sort of think there are, you know, you, you think every year, hundreds of thousands, literally, of uh, books are published. Um, and like, how many of those are people going to be reading in, in five years? How many, how many people are going to be reading in 10 years? Um, uh, think of how many books have been published over the last, you know, thousands of years and and like there's so much great stuff like like stuff that's a 9.5 out there um that you will never have time in your life to read uh i i i i think that's part of uh my my reason for why i chose to to write an immortal character in my first series it's like man wouldn't it be cool if you could be alive long enough to pursue all the things that you're fascinated by like oh i want to learn how to be a blacksmith like i just think that looks really cool and and fun to do and i bet it takes years to become good at it i wish i had enough life that i could do that and 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 i think the same thing you know or or, or blowing glass i mean like wow to get good at that that takes a really long time i i i went my wife and i did went to a glass shop on the oregon coast and we made a thing and it, and it turned out terrible and you know the guy was helping us and stuff and it was still sort of cute you, you know you have it up somewhere in my inside as a paperweight and it looks bad so so i i can't quite throw it away but it's like wouldn't it be neat if you could make something beautiful like you know you see these gifts or something uh, um correct pronunciation uh gifts um on the internet of, of, of people, you know, glass blowing, and, and, and you think there's so much to life that's so beautiful and so neat that you will not get to experience. And, and, and so here, why don't you read this crappy book? It's like, man, why would you read a crappy book? It's, it's, it's like, usually I can tell within, within a chapter. Usually I, I, I like to think I can tell within a page uh, if an author knows what he's doing or what she's doing. And, and I am not always right. Uh, it, it, if it doesn't look like the person knows what they're doing, it's just like, uh, I'm not gonna waste my time. Uh, there's, there's so much great stuff out there. I mean, I'd, I'd rather reread a book that's a 10 than, than read you know, two books that are, that are sixes. So, so I, that's not to say that there's not value and, and, and in, in reading books that are not great, you know, and, and, and or, or, or that you should only read, you know, the great books or something. Uh, like there's certainly social value in, in reading stuff that other people are reading and, and getting to talk things over that, that allows you to dive into to books in a way that you, that you otherwise can't. Um, it allows you to experience something with your friends. Um, it, it allows you to, to learn different things. There, there, there's certainly ways that you get to participate with the culture if you're reading, you know, books that have been written in the last 50 years. Um, but, but the odds that you're going to read a great book, it's like, are, are just lower, you know, you know, it's, it's the book you're reading now going to be read in 50 years. Um, most of them aren't. And, and that's, that's okay. There's nothing bad with writing a book that's nearly, you know, kind of entertaining. Um, <clears throat> just like there's no problem with listening to pop music. You, you know, it's like most of this is going to be forgotten. Most of it is forgettable. Um, so, so, so I, 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 and, and I, I think you can learn a lot by studying, um, you know, very forgettable books that uh, that yet are well crafted, and uh, like, like like sometimes when you read a genius book, it's just like the whole thing just dazzles you, and 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 you can't even tell they're doing so many things so right, you 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 can't even take it apart. Uh, it's it's like a diamond in front of you, and you're just like I I, I don't know how to make that. That doesn't even help me. Where where, where a book that's kind of crappy, but but can constructs its plot really well. You, you can be like, okay, okay, I, I, I'm wading through some garbage, but I can see the plot very clearly. I can see that, that 
I, I'm not going to name names, but 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 you know, somebody who sells millions of books and is and is mocked roundly. It's like, oh, they sell millions of books for a reason, usually. And and and, and so, as a as a student of of uh, the art form, I, I certainly think it, it makes sense to to study books that are really successful in what they do, while being not you know genius level. So, um, <clears throat> okay, <laughs> okay, um, let's see. Is there anything else? Um, uh, oh, so, so, so uh, Colin Frazier uh, asks, and, and I think this will be the last question because I've, I've kept you guys for almost half hour now. Um, and again, thanks for your patience with me. Um, asks, um, wait, Colin, have I, have, I, have, I, uh, have I met you? I feel like you've come to a signing before, maybe somewhere in the Midwest. Anyway, um, your, your, your name seems familiar as, I, as, as I'm looking at it. Um, as I understand it, Audiobooks have become a more important part of a book's success. Uh, one, do you ever listen to audiobooks? Uh, two, how involved is the narrator in selecting an audiobook narrator? Um, and uh, um, <clears throat> um, okay, sorry, I was just look, looking at the, the, the okay, yeah, at Lexington, Kentucky. I thought so, I thought so. Um, <clears throat> um, uh, do I ever listen to audiobooks? I, I listen, I listen briefly. And, and this is, this is true even when I have, um, even when I have fantastic narrator like, like Simon Vance, um, who, whose work I adore. Um, I, like, like at some point you have to cut a book loose and, and, and let, let's say there's a book you wrote when you were 30 years old. And then you look at it when you're 40 <clears throat> and you're like, you know what? I made some bad decisions in this chapter or, okay, that decision worked out all right, but I've learned some things since then. I'd really like to edit that. And with a book, you always can edit it, at least until you send it to your publisher that very, very last time. And, and usually I'm editing it right up to the last moment when they pry it from my fingers. Um, and then it goes and you, and you, you get the, you, you listen to the audiobook, and, <clears throat> And and the actor, uh, the narrator, you, you know, reads a line, and, and you're like, a couple things can happen, um, but usually it's like, oh man, that that line didn't quite land right. Either you you, you say, ah, oh, see, I, he he didn't quite stress the right word. He he didn't quite do that right. Oh, okay, it's serviceable now. Or you go, oh, here's why he didn't do the right word here's why I didn't stress the sentence correctly because I should have written it like this. And so like the whole time I'm listening to, to any chapter, I'm thinking, oh, I could have tweaked that like this. Oh, I could have tweaked that like this. Oh, that, that actually, you know, every once in a while I get with, with, with a guy like Simon Benz, I'll get like, Oh, that, that was actually pretty great. I really like what he did there. I, I wish I'd thought of that myself. You, you know, that, that, that sort of stress or that accent, um, uh, how he did that is great. But more often it's, it's like, oh, th this didn't work. And, and I see why he, as a narrator, missed what I was doing because I didn't do the work right myself. So I, I, I'm, I'm consistently stuck in this place of trying to edit the book and wishing I'd done it differently. And I can't. I th like obviously it's it's it, it's too late. So 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 it's sort of it's sort of a torture of like being shown your shortcomings, um, and and then being told, yeah yeah, uh, but appreciate this for what it is. And it's like, well well yeah, and and like like sometimes I'll I'll, I'll listen to certain parts or I'll, I'll I'll have to revisit things when I'm when I'm writing a book connected to an old book, and and I'll I'll be doing that with with, with you know print, the printed page. I'll be like, ah oh, dang it. I should have tweaked that a little bit or, you know, 500 pages later, I, I reveal something and I really could have put it right there. I, I could have put some hints. Um, <clears throat> and every once in a while, I, I, I will have the thing of where I go, oh, okay, that, that was actually pretty good. That, that worked out all right. Um, but, but, but it's, it's kind of a, it's an emotional ringer to, to go through, uh, even with a guy who is as fantastic as Simon Vance, which, which I really appreciate. Um, to how involved is the author in selecting an audiobook narrator? Uh, usually not at all. Um, uh, we 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 had a time where uh, we uh, we redid a book and and or or the first book I I didn't feel the narration was up to what I hoped for. Um, and, and and I asked for a I asked for a better narrator and or it totally came through that that the the first book had been recorded during during the big recession in 2009. And uh, it was a place where everybody was, everybody, this was before audiobooks got really popular. Everybody was trying to save money. Everybody was just trying to keep their people employed. 
Uh, so one of the places that they that they saved some money was with the audiobook narrators. Um, so everybody went, went with cheap narrators for a year or two, and then they realized that wasn't that wasn't a good idea. Uh, but by that point, I'd already been published. Um, or orbit for the book two uh, got me some advance, and and he was just obviously um, hitting it out of the park. Um, so so uh, uh, Murr uh, Jack uh, built on that question: um, how how involved is the author in the actual recording uh, itself or, or directing it? Uh, usually, very very little. Usually, not at all. Um, my my first uh, series, the Night Angel books, I didn't even know I was going to have an audio book. Uh, you know, as part of the rights that I sold, but but I was a first time author, and not everybody got audio books. Um, <clears throat> I didn't even know that, that there were going to be audio books until after it was done, and and I remember thinking, but but like how how is how's the guy going to know how to you know say some of these words? I, I they're not going to get the pronunciations right, and and sure enough, they didn't get some of the pronunciations right. So, so the second time around, I said, you, you know, I I'd like to talk to the guy, and I'd I'd like to, um, I'd li I'd like to, you know, I know you selected this Simon Vance, who I hadn't heard of at the time. I'd uh, I'd like to talk to him, and, and and so I did, and and we had wonderful conversations, and I I would tell Simon, you know, everything I was thinking. He was he was very congenial. Um, Simon has done maybe more audiobooks than anyone. Um, <clears throat> anyone period because he's been doing it for a long time and he's very prolific uh, I, I think he should have like a Guinness Book of World Record kind of thing um, he might not technically because he did some of them you used to have to do your audiobooks under uh, you do it under different names depending on who you're recording for so he did you know 100 or 200 books under one name and then switched to his own name and, and now he's done so, so many but he told me um, <clears throat> he, he, he told me that uh, out of all the books he's done, the only other author who's called him is is Christopher Priest, um, who who is you know a sci-fi author, and and uh, uh, he his books were eventually optioned for um, uh, the Prestige, I think, and uh, one of the uh, one of the Pirates of the Caribbean uh, uh, movies, so it basically stole his plot, so that so they gave him some money for that too. Um, <clears throat> So so, uh, so 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 out of all, all the hundreds of books he's done, uh, apparently I'm one of the only ones who's who's actually called him up and talked with him. And and we, we we've had we had wonderful conversations in between every book, and it was really a highlight of of uh, my workflow was was actually getting to call Simon and and we would just talk things through and 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 he would he bounce things off me and, and and I'd sort of be like, well, this is what I intended, and now I leave it to your artistry to you know. Now you add your art to this, and and uh, I think that went about as well as it possibly could could have gone. So I I hope to to work with him again someday because because he's great uh, and and a friend at this point. So um, <clears throat> okay, I am going to uh, oh oh he, he, here's a quick one I can answer very easily uh, from from Jacob Fett. Uh, this may be a long shot, but the uh, is Lightbringer series particularly Kip's arc at all influenced by uh, I don't know how to say this word uh, Shunin Shonen anime no it is not um every once in a while I, I i get that hey is this is this influenced by this and i was like i, I haven't even seen that i i don't even know what that is so so no um thanks thank you for your questions um uh um anyway i guess that's that's probably about i'm probably about talked out uh, i think my i think my daughters are are about to be home now um and and it is it is minecraft day i uh, i play minecraft Every other day, we get to play a little bit of Minecraft together because they're finally old enough to play video games a little bit. Um, so you know that's totally daddy daughter bonding time, right? Um, but they're, they're going to be knocking on the door any any second. Um, so uh, thank you, thank you all for joining me. Uh, I'll, I'll throw the uh, the shameless plug for the web store again. That's just open through the through the end of the month. Um, and if if you have any other um, any other uh, questions for me, or I I, I didn't. I, I didn't um, answer your question. Please queue it up, uh, and and we will write all of those down, and we will, um, <clears throat> and and I will I will grab some of those to start out next time. Also, man, next time I'm 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 gonna really uh, I'm gonna really work on answering some of your some of your chat questions as those come in come in because I've been looking at them and getting distracted and, and losing my train of thought. Uh, so I, I, I'm still working on this whole thing. Like, like, how do I engage with you guys, but answer your questions, which are kind of long form questions, and um, also try not to seem too incredibly scattered. So, so thanks for your patience with me. 
uh, and I hope to talk with you uh, sometime next month. Thank you so much. Have a great day. Bye.